1812 is the time period that we're representing. Uh, if you think about history and you look at the um, earlier time periods, uh, they had the big hips, you know, they had the waistline here, and then as the century came up, the waistlines came up, and so now we have the Regency style, the bust, the waistline is underneath the bust. Uh, you were supposed to look Grecian, and Miss Susan, would you come over here and I will, because she is the epitome of tall and slender and, you know, us old frumpy ladies look like we, yeah. But, I mean, there again, you, you've got the, the, the silhouette of tall and, and sort of what's, uh, help me with some uh, adjectives here. Columnars. Grecian. Uh, you're going for that hourglass figure. Okay, okay, and yeah, he's, the, he's the style expert here. <laughs> so, uh, that's, you know, we're, we're representing, uh, she's a finer woman, I'm a sergeant's wife, so I'm uh, uh, working around the fire, I, she's not going to be cooking in something this lovely. Turn around and show them that lovely hat that she's made, yes, uh, uh, again, uh, similar to the one I showed mine there a minute, a minute ago. And uh, where's your slave? Oh, Callie, girl, come here. Callie, get here. Get up here. And, yeah, Callie's doing all the cooking today, but I see. Where's your apron, woman? Yes, sir. And do I see a split on your lip? Who, who, who beat you today? Oh, who knows? There's so many people. She's abused around the camp. Well, I guess we're going to have to talk to that sergeant, aren't we? I think so. He, he, I think he's the most likely culprit. And you know, he's not even here. We know those little short guys, they get that in Yes, they do. And then they want to take it out of everybody. Yeah, Kelly's one of our newest members in our unit, and uh, uh, so this is a new new venture for us because she is a, a, a woman of color, she is black, and she has very boldly, boldly chosen. chosen to be a servant, you know, a slave, slave. actually, because we said, well, you could be a free woman, you could be this, you could be that, yeah. and we'd all fit in. She says, no, I think it'd be fun to be a slave. So that's something we're trying to work out with the dynamics of our unit as far as it's hard. Are we gonna, you know, and we, she's a riot to be around. <laughs> so, so by Mrs. Senawa, we, we hope to have some more clothes on you. Uh, yeah. But a lady well, we wore to teach her some needle art so that she can make herself more useful. That's true. As a lady's maid. Yeah. A lady with a morning. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Because now I made this before I had a servant, so I had to figure out how I could dress myself. Now, sometimes my husband will be ladies' maid, but you know, gentlemen don't like to be bothered with that. So I'm going to have to train Callie so that she could. But before that, so I had to design her so I could call myself. Right, because if they button in the back, you cannot put these on. Uh, this is a front closing gown. Uh, first thing I have on is a chemise. That's a, our underslip. And then we would put stays on. It's basically our period bra. Mm -hmm. Get everything, keep them up, you know, proportion. And then in this case, I have the front opening gown so I can get into it easily address myself. Okay, so we, I know we have a lot of gentlemen here that want to go over there. It's uh, a sketch lift. Yeah, and Kelly is uh, wearing basically the same thing as a big front dress, and uh, she has a chemise on. She, she has a modesty piece, that's the scarf. We should keep, you know, back then you wanted to have ivory white skin. Well, one interesting tidbit of history since we're talking about free women of color. Um, Captain Morrison's company from the 2nd Kentucky Volunteer Militia who were here who built the fort, I believe it was Captain Morrison's company, had a free man of color, was one of the soldiers within his company. Really? Some companies within the 2nd Kentucky Regiment. Captain Morrison was the only one that I noted uh, that had a free man of color, was a soldier within his company, very likely, was posted here and was helping with the construction of the fort. Later, the cutting down of the trees that were floated to the uh, Lake Erie, which were used to build the barges and boats for uh, Admiral Perry's fleets. And then later, they garrisoned at Fort Mix for a while. So it's an interesting little tidbit of history. Uh, for the gentlemen, what we're going to do is start off, because I know the ladies have cooking to do for lunch, we're going to start off with the U.S. regulars. Uh, U.S. regulars, first light artillery, um, but the blue coat was very similar to what the, the regulars were wearing. Um, Light artillery because of the gold piping on the shoulders, um, the collars. The plume, red and white plume, identifying light artillery. Colored plumes determine what particular unit you were with. Full white was an infantry unit. 
purple, red was uh, heavy artillery, green was the rifle units. Um, so this is a, though actually the light artillery for most of the battles did not work with artillery. They fought along with the militia and the, the regular units as an infantry unit. So hence the, the musket. If we were on horseback as we were moving, we did carry a sword um, for fighting on horseback as a, more of a cavalry unit. Then the, the lighter jacket, Getting out of the wolves would have been more of a summer uniform, a lightweight linen jacket, and then the fatigue cap to where we were wearing the, the shako for battle. Donation or designation here, one uh, shoulder patch. One shoulder corporal. And the color has a lot to do with the rank. Not only does the shoulder, if he would be a, a lieutenant in infantry, he'd have his epaulet on the left, lieutenant, lieutenant. And it would, in infantry, be silver, silver, silver. silver for, for U.S. infantry. If he was a captain in the infantry, he would have it on his right shoulder, and it would just be one. You don't, you do not get two epaulets until you are a colonel or above. And then the light artillery with gold, our sergeant wears the two, but then also has the, the red sash. Go along with it. Next up is our gentleman. I am a civilian. I'm dressed wearing what would have been common everyday wear for any reasonable gentleman. So, somebody who would be working in a city or just generally not the kind of person you would find out here would be wearing what I'm wearing. I have my tailcoat on. It's a double-breasted tailcoat. Then I have my stylish waistcoat. On, and then my trousers. Underneath this, I have a shirt on. Uh, it's just a plain white shirt. Then I have my cravat. The military would often wear a neck stock, but civilian is going to wear a cravat. It's a silk piece of cloth that gets wrapped around the neck multiple times to uh, keep your collar up and look nice. So you'll notice that my pants are very tightly fitted and end well above my shoe. That was the common fashion. By having it so tight, it shows off how muscular my leg is and shows off that I'm a healthy young man uh, who is an ideal choice to suit somebody's body. Now, my hat is what is called a stovepipe hat. It is a conical hat. Uh, it just starts as a cylinder, then when I put it on, that makes it a, a little more oval. Uh, this is one of the many styles of hats that you would see in civilian life. 